Hello, my name is Ashish Naik and I'm an Applications Engineer at National Instruments. Today, I shall be covering how National Instruments products can be used to acquire data using a retriggable hardware trigger. This is useful for acquiring a finite number of samples each time a digital trigger signal is received. This concept can be seen from the following diagram. For each edge of the trigger signal, there will be four pulses of the sample clock, i.e. the device will take four samples every time a digital trigger is received. To achieve this functionality, a hardware trigger is used to generate finite digital pulses using the onboard counters. These pulses will internally be used as a clock source for the analog input task. As you can see from the following diagram, the analog input is set up for continuous acquisition and the clock source for this analog input is determined from the counter task's output. The same number of samples per channel and the same rate is specified for both the counter and the analog input tasks. So how do we do this in practice? Well, I'm now going to show you how the power of LabVIEW along with National Instruments hardware can be used to do this. I'm using a compact DAC chassis, which is a 9172, a 9215, which is an analog input module, a 9401, which is digital input output module, along with a DAC signal accessory, which I'll be using to simulate a sinusoidal wave, as well as simulating our digital trigger. To demonstrate this, I shall be using one of the examples that comes with LabVIEW. This can be found under Find Examples, Hardware Input and Output, DACMX, Synchronization, Multifunction, and Multifunction Retriggable Pulse Train Generation. As you can see from our block diagram, we initially need to configure our DACMX task. The top row shows our analog input being configured as a continuous sample and our bottom row is configured for our counter output as finite number of samples. The clock source for our analog input is specified as the internal output from our counter output. To allow us to do this, the advanced terminals need to be allowed. To enable this feature, we need to right click on our clock source, go to IO name filtering and make sure include advanced terminals is selected. We have used a DACMX trigger property node to allow us to set retriggerable to true. We call the DACMX start VI to begin the acquisition and to arm the counter which begins the pulse train generation. We then enter the loop and shall continue reading until either the user has pressed stop or an error has occurred. We should now have a look at the front panel and configure this. As you can see, we have configured our channels and rates. We shall now run this. No data is read from the analog input until the digital trigger has been pressed. Once the trigger has been pressed, we shall read a finite number of analog samples. As you can see, we can re-trigger this to receive more samples. I hope this has provided you with a little bit of an insight into how to program retriggable analog input. For more information, please visit ni.com forward slash support.